Good evening. I'd like to call the August 31st, 2022 Town Board meeting to order. Ms. Marco, would you please call the roll? Mr. Cristo? Present. Mrs. Villa Guerrero? Present. Mr. Dodson? Present. Mr. Mastriani? Present. And Mrs. Collins? Present. Five present. Thank you, Ms. Marco. A quorum is, pres is present. Uh, please join me in, in the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Mastriani, will you lead us? The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> now we'll have the privilege of the floor. Um, please remember that you keep your remarks to around four minutes. I'll raise my hand when you're getting close to your time, and you can wrap up with whatever you want to say. Okay? Ms. Marco, is there anyone who wishes to speak? Katrina Smith? Good evening. My name is Katrina Smith. Um, my first time here, so I'm going to try to get this right. I would like to adjust the chair of the meeting. And some of the concerns that um, some of my uh, neighbors have is the raise in the taxes for our water bill. Um, we're living in an apartment complex, and we've done a little bit of research, and it looks like in our apartment complex we have 320 buildings, and roughly it's going to be about $177,000 apparently that they're being taxed, which is a great increase compared to what we've been paying. And they've bestowed those lovely taxes on to us with the water and sewer bill. But with that in about 11, almost 12,000 homes in the Rotterdam area, it looks like it's going to be about $7 million, roughly. And I was wondering how much these projects, how much these projects are going to cost the community. I don't know. <laughs> That'll be a part of the meeting yeah. tonight in, in two weeks. Tonight and in two weeks? Yeah, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, just so I'm clear, was that for Vista? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ray, Adrian? Great job. Ray Adrian, 148 Fabian Drive. I've been living in this town well over 50 years. I see the two proposed, the improvement is in the water and the, and the new sewer plant that our proposed are going to raise our taxes by quite a bit. Mm -hmm. In a year when the inflation is through the roof, gas prices are high, and you have a lot of us older folks that are on fixed incomes, and it's going to hurt. Mm -hmm. Something should be looked into, as you said, you're looking for grants. Well, by looks of the, you figures you put down that grants aren't going to be very high compared to what the taxpayers are going to be saddled with. So I think there should be another way to get around it or put a moratorium on some of the new apartments that are being built mm -hmm. that are putting a drain on our wastewater system and our water system. The pipes are small, they can't recover, the tank's quick enough, it's been that way for 30, 40 years. This isn't a new problem any more than a wastewater treatment plant was because it was discussed back when uh, Helbert Meadows was being built about the draw on the water and the sewer. Nothing was done then and now all of a sudden we have to get everything completed in a short period of time and put a burden on old folks that are pay, already paying high taxes. Thank you. Thank you. Renee Mertens. Renee Mertens. I think the board already knows my position on many ideas and thoughts when it comes to the water. I've been here a numerous amount of times. I know this problem's been, the can has been kicked down the road by many administrations. They make promises that they never keep. Uh, so I'm just going to leave that one there. I'm really actually talking to the 11th hour changes. I just wanted to speak to a couple of the board members tonight. Um, on July 27th, Mr. Christou admitted a mistake in the contract um, with no option to buy. I just wanted to speak to you and just say thank you for being honest. I can respect that. We all make mistakes. I don't agree with the Viaport contract, but I can show you that I do respect that. That's humility. You don't see that very often in our society anymore. 
As for Ms. Miller Herrera, she hides behind her as stain. She doesn't really use it the way it's supposed to be used. She's fully informed, yet she hides behind it as a lawyer. You do not earn my vote for that reason. You should step down if you can't make the hard decisions. I went back to the December vote. You didn't even give a reason when you're required to. So I don't respect you. And there's a reason behind it, and I'm sure it will come out. As far as the water systems, I look forward to the public meetings. I think this town needs something. I came from other areas of the state. I have never seen such a cheap water system that doesn't work well. I have paid over $1,000 for my water. And I'm taxed, not on by tax, but by gallons. This town board wants to fix the problem that no other administration had the balls to fix. Thank you. Good evening, Supervisor, Town Council members. Uh, my name is Steve Boynton. I live at 1919 Helderberg Ave. And I'm here to talk about Fisher Cemetery. Um, last year, you did a resolution uh, taking over the cemetery property. And it's been almost over a year, I believe, and I haven't seen a town worker in there yet. Um, actually, right behind my backyard in the cemetery, there's a very large tree that has split in half, and half of it is coming towards my house. And then, can I approach and give you pictures? So the bottom picture is the best picture to look at. Um, you can see where the, the tree has split and it's heading towards my property. Uh, it's actually over uh, my vinyl fence. So when the bottom branch that's holding the top part collapses, it's going to come down, destroy my fence, probably hit my house, destroy a shed, um, probably hit the pool cover, hit the pool, I'm talking thousands and thousands of dollars in damage. Um, I have included some emails to you folks and uh, my insurance agent along with it. He assures me the town will be responsible, but I prefer it gets taken care of because I don't want to deal with insurance companies, contractors, cleanup, etc. So I'm just asking you to look at that again. Like I know you did the resolution last year, and if I had a tree on my property and it was over a neighbor's property and about to do damage, I would take care of it. You are now my neighbor by taking over that property, so I just appreciate if you would take care of uh, that situation. Thank you. Thank you. Reverend Longbray. Reverend uh, Dustin Longmire. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. All good. It's a new last name, so I'm not you know, Mr. Uh, Reverend uh, Dustin Longmire, 4 Oak Street, uh, pastor of Messiah Lutheran Church and executive director of the Trinity Community Center. Um, friends, uh, a few weeks ago, you may have seen uh, coverage of it in the Daily Gazette, uh, we had our pride flag uh, stolen in front of our congregation at Messiah Lutheran Church on Gilderland Avenue. Uh, our congregation saw this as both a uh, wake-up call and the subsequent rallying around our community as an immense opportunity to bring about incredibly uh, important change in our local community. Uh, we've certainly seen an increase uh, in a wide variety of divisiveness here in Rotterdam, and we are a politically mixed, increasingly diverse town. We're at the confluence of urban, suburban, and rural areas. Uh, half of our population we, um, is under the United Way's threshold of uh, what they call Alice Asset Limited Income Constrained Employed, and we've mostly been spending the last two and a half years apart from each other in kind of COVID cocoons. And I deeply believe uh, that that act of hate against our congregation was a symptom of a wider issue of divisiveness and lack of, uh, and this number of folks um, not being welcoming to one another in our local community. I deeply believe we need to get to know one another again and read in a community 
together. Uh, during, the, during the pandemic, our congregation merged with Trinity Reformed Church over here on 705 uh, Curry Road, and we believe because of our faith that we are called to continue building a table for people of all backgrounds, or your faith regardless, and we believe that's an essential part of our mission. We believe our three impact areas at the Trinity Community Center are food security, mental health and wellness, arts, culture, and self-expression. Um, we probably are not the only place in town where we can create these spaces for everyone to sort of re-knit community together again. Uh, we already have some existing great facilities, the Boys and Girls Club, the Senior Center, Parks, and more, uh, but we deeply need more spaces and places for, once again, us just to get to know each other once again. Uh, I'm really, uh, this, this instance of that flag being um, stolen was a great reminder for me that uh, we need to interact and work in more partnership with our town board, our elected leaders. And I deeply hope, I would love to be able to meet with you all soon to talk more about how we can collaborate further, not reduplicate services and programs, uh, and just figure out once again how we can create more spaces to just get to know each other once again and lower the divisiveness in our local community. Thank you. Right, Thank you. Brenda Derosia. <coughs> Hi, Brenda Tarogian, 1033 6th Street. Okay, and this is going to be old hat. Um, this has to do with the via port, so the water stuff. And, um, I'm still doing, I'm still doing um, petitioning on the via port. At the present time, I have uh, 500 and some odd, 500 something. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I need 337 to make it kind of like official. Um, oh, I have 556. I presented at the next meeting. Couple of questions. Couple of couple of things that were mentioned by two board members. One was a previous board member. One was a present board member. And somebody tried to explain it to me. Explain it to me like a resident who doesn't understand finance. We were told by Mr. Cristal, by Mr. Um, Gillarelli, via Port gave Rotterdam nine million dollars. So that's what you said, sir. That's what you said. And I, 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 all right, I want to. I want those who time back. Everybody heard it. Nine million. Not invested. Nine million. We'd like to know where that money is or what what happened to it. The ARPA fund. How much do I to them receive? Where is that money? What bank is it in? What what's it? What what the interest is gaining? When I started this via port thing, it was not a political issue. It was an issue for the town of Rotterdam who cannot afford going to via port. It did, I did not make this a political issue. It became a political issue by two board members. By two board members. Because they were on the previous board. I'm sorry, I stated facts. I did not, I did not I did not say anything negative about any board member up here. And on the last meeting, <clears throat> I was defamed by a board member. I was told that I was a, xenoph uh, a xenophobe. I was told, sitting right there, that I said Viaport wasn't a good neighbor and they, they did not belong in Rotterdam. I did not say any of that. And I don't think any of anybody in the last meetings ever said that. I've been very, very kind to this board. The only thing I said was the previous board made this decision, which is fact. I was, you owe me an apology. You owe me, an, you, and you owe the town of Rotterdam an apology because you basically told the residents here that we're xenophobic. Uh, yes, you did. Yes, you did. I don't know why Viaport became a personal issue here at this board with two board members. I didn't make it personal. I made it about the residents of Rotterdam, about the money that was going to be spent, Nobody here said that there were nefarious undergoing with this deal. That's what you said. If it was not nefarious, why was it done 
in the dark of the night without community, without community being involved in it and having a vote. So if nothing was wrong, this would have been brought up and people would have voted on it. But it didn't. So when you do something like that, yeah, man, that, then it becomes something's not right. I did what I'm doing. I'm doing what the residents either can't do or feel that their town government does not represent them. I'm out there talking to people. I'm out there talking to them. And they're thanking me for everything I've done. Sorry, Mr. Mastriani, they're thanking me. They're thanking for my passion. They're thanking for I'm a little angry because that's what is needed. Don't appreciate text, I know, but man, I, you gotta give me one more minute. What I promised to the town of Rotterdam, if I decide to run for town council, I promise you, I will never, ever, ever berate you at a town meeting. I will respect your First Amendment right, the right to say what you need to say. I will respect that if I plan on doing that. Rotterdam residents deserve better. And one more thing, and this is important. You made a comment at the last meeting that being a board member is putting a strain on your business. If any people here on this board feel that being here to represent the town of Rotterdam is hurting their business, please do the town of Rotterdam a favor. Resign. What? Yes, you did say it. You said it, sir. Not middle of it. Agenda, which is fine. That's what you need to do. Apologize for that. You did. Look at the tape. I look at the tape. People have come up and talked to me about it. So I'm, it's just not me. It's, it's the residents out there that I'm going door to door. If for some reason being a being a councilman here is interfering in your daily job of your regular job. Do the town of Rotterdam and the residents a favor. Any of you, I don't care who you are, please resign and let somebody who's willing to serve the, the, the entire community, not Democrats, not Republicans, not independents, everybody. I promise the town of Rotterdam, should I run, I will respect every single one of you and work for every single one of you, regardless of you're Democrat, Republican, independent. This should never have been a political issue. Sorry, but thank you for allowing me an extra minute or two. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody who would like to speak under privilege of the floor but didn't sign up? I can't do twice. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Now, is there anybody on Zoom that has, any, has anything to say? Okay. And one last time, nobody else wants to speak? Okay, and we'll close privilege of the floor and move on to resolution. Our first resolution of the night is uh, resolution number 252 of the year 2022. The clerk will read. Appoint a senior water and sewer maintenance worker. Any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani. On the question? Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christo? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. So Mr. Calarosi is here tonight. Why don't you stand up and congratulate? Our next item is resolution number 253 of the year 2022. The clerk will read. Appoint an account clerk payroll audit clerk. Any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani. On the question, clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christo? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. yes. Uh, Ms. Hunt, are you here? Yeah. If you are, congratulations. <laughs> Next resolution is resolution 254 of the year 2022. The clerk will read. To enter into an agreement with Orrick, Harrington, and Sutcliffe LLP Bond Council. Any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani. On the question. 
Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christo? Yes. Mrs. Bill Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dawson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. A motion passed. A resolution passes. Resolution number 255 of the year 2022, the clerk will read. Determining that the proposed Town of Rotterdam water system improvements project <coughs> is a type one action and will not have a significant adverse impact on the environment. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani on the question. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christo? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dotson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. Resolution number 256 of the year 2022, the clerk will read. Authorizing submission of the New York State Water Infrastructure Improvement Act WIA grant application for the Town of Rotterdam Water System Improvements Project. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani on the question. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christo? Yes. Mrs. Bill Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. Resolution number 257 of the year 2022, the clerk will read. Authorizing submission of a New York State Water Infrastructure Improvement Act WIA grant application for the Town of Rotterdam Wastewater Treatment Plant Improvements. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani on the question. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christo? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Resolution passes. That concludes our resolutions for tonight. We'll now move on to the orders. Ms. Marco, will you read the first order? To approve an order calling for a public hearing on Water District Number no. Five Water System Improvement Project. Is there any discussion? Will there be a presentation? Yes. 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 I don't know if you heard uh, Council Member uh, Miller Herrera asked if there would be a presentation, and on the September 14th meeting, it is out in Rotterdam Junction. I'd like to remind everybody there will be a presentation on it. Uh, anybody, any other discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani. On the question, clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christo? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Order passed. Second order, Ms. Uh, the clerk will read. To approve an order calling for a public hearing on sewer district number two, wastewater treatment plant improvement project. Okay. Any discussion? I, I, there's going to be information on that too at the uh, public hearing. A presentation. A presentation. Mm -hmm. yes. And again, it's, it's in the junction, it's on, right on Main Street in the firehouse. Same time, it's just out there. We usually hold two meetings out there a year. Any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani. On the question, clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christo? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Five yes. Order passes. Okay. That concludes that. Now we'll move on to liaison reports. Do any of the board members have a liaison report? How about miscellaneous? Do any board members have anything that they'd like to say under miscellaneous? Yes, I would, Madam Supervisor. Mm -hmm. um, again, I'm going to say a couple of things, and I don't want this banter to go back and forth. I have no ill feelings against you, Mr. Rosian, and if you took what I said, if it offended you, I will apologize for that. I will respect I you, you yours, and I will you. apologize for that. But as a point of clarification, Okay. My comments were in defense to what yeah, I felt. The mics are on. My comments were in defense to what I felt were personal attacks. Now, you said they weren't. I'll accept that, and I'm based on that. I'll apologize to you. As far as Viewport, I am not here to you go against again? what the. I am. Oh, I am not here to create. A, I've stated my opinion, and I pride myself in the fact that I've been consistent with that opinion. You said you don't agree with that. That's fine. 
And all I said, basically my intent was that it's worth the dialogue, it was worth the analysis. The majority of the board has taken a direction. I'm not here to rub against that grain. Okay? Yes. I took a, I took a position, and I decided that I'm not going to change my position based on the direction of the wind, like so many elected officials before and after me do and will. Okay? My point with the report was that they are a corporate citizen of this town, and they are a corporate resident of this town, and they invested or spent, I never said they gave the town, they invested or spent, with the words that I used, $9 million to buy the, and then they spent another $3 million to build it up an aquarium where over 200,000 people go through every year, okay? I too have the privilege of talking to residents. I see 2,000 residents a week, and I have that, and it's a privilege to be able to engage like you've been engaging by going door to door. So we have that in common. I pride myself on the fact that we are residents and part of this community for over 50 years. And I take it seriously. And I also feel like I have served with pride and dignity and I've always maintained the balance between my business. And my, my, if, my, if my comments were defensive because I felt I was personally attacked, I'll withdraw them, okay? But I've always maintained the balance between my commitment here and my family business, okay? Because we are one community. Back to what the reverend said about talking to each other. I've always invited any person here who agreed with me or disagreed with me. I'm the easiest person in town to find. You want to come have a conversation with me? I will always make time for any resident in the town of Rotterdam. And if I have stumbled or if I've missed something, I will own it as I have. So. Hopefully, we don't have to banter back and forth. It's not healthy for either one of us. I called for civility. There were comments made about the money going to Turkey and the people from Turkey, and I took that, I took that as xenophobic comments because I don't want the mall, no matter what the outcome, to feel like they are the enemy because they have invested in this community. And you know, there were theories passed back and forth, and I have some, but again, we don't need to repeat them. But again, my call was only for some civility. Tempers were running high, accusations were made, a lot of information was dispensed, and a lot of misinformation was dispensed. So hopefully this puts that issue to bed, and we can move forward and not just, you know, I, I have no desire to argue with the good residents of this town. I try my best to represent every day based on the, the residents that I speak to on a daily basis. That's all I have to say, thank you. Supervisor, I have. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, just some of the uh, privilege of the four comments. I think, Steve, you may have mentioned again on Fisher Cemetery. Uh, yes, the town has taken that over, and you should see a major difference there. I, I drive down Heldenburg to go to my house every day. That has been mowed on a regular basis by the town staff. Um, uh, we thank you for bringing that tree to our attention, and that is something that should be addressed, and uh, we will get on that right away. Uh, Mr. Deputy Supervisor, on that note, uh, Steve brings up a good point, because I have two relatives in town that have a similar issue. One, the resident finally took the tree down. Uh, my own mother-in-law, who, who lives in Colonial Manor, there's a pretty much desolate house next door, and there's a tree leaning over and I've been trying through DPW to find out what the process is, is either A, and what happens is there's power lines going through, so it's complicated even more because now you have to involve National Grid. Where can any resident who has these issues with overleaning trees that are dropping things on roofs sometimes that could damage roofs, and if a, a strike a bolt of lightning, like Steve said, you know, where, where can we get some guidance for our residents when a tree is impeding on your property, what the process is, where to go, how to do it, and if we have to involve National Grid, how do we throw some urgency to National Grid? Uh, well, Evan, first of all, I think you got to have some separation because if it's private property to private property, right. that, that's something, again, that the town would not act upon. I if it's to... land owned by the town and, uh, you know, it's, it's our tree, you know, that's something, and then the gentleman's bringing that to our attention. Uh, you know, we, up until uh, just this last year, we had no involvement in the cemetery. And of course, uh, as you know, there was a resolution approved for that. Uh, now we have to take, uh, you know, the uh, the ownership and the maintenance of that uh, place into consideration. And, um, you know, you, you're bringing it to our attention that we have an issue on property that we're maintaining, and that's that's something that we have to address as a board. Yeah, I'm more, more than the town acting on it. What does a neighbor do? Okay, have this neighbor, the house is, the person living there is a recluse, for example. 
this tower, this thing is leaning over on my roof. I can't go on their property and cut their tree. So is there a procedure, is there something that private residents can do in a scenario like that? Jonathan, I'm gonna put that on your lap. I know an answer to that. I'm not going to give private <laughs> no. legal advice in a public forum. Right. It's a private dispute. My suggestion is that if you have that issue, we can contact a lawyer that you trust and they will tell you what your rights are. Thank you for the answer. I just wasn't sure if it was a policy or a Yes. Um, continuing, uh, I think it's Ray, correct? Uh, Ray, thank you again for stepping up. Uh, the purpose of going through this process is just uh, what you're bringing to our attention. We are well aware, again, of the condition and the deficiencies in both our water and wastewater systems. Um, you know, I think Renee had uh, also mentioned this is something that, uh, again, as a community, we continue to kick down the road. Um, we can no longer uh, kick this can down the road. Um, we have a wastewater treatment plant that uh, is antiquated. That's the bottom line. Um, the, the previous generations of the town of Rotterdam paid for that treatment plant to be installed and they have put good money towards that treatment plant for, for decades. You know, now, now our generation is here and, um, you know, we have to make that decision. You know, we're at a crossroads. Do, do we finally step up to the plate and address the issue? Because, you know, the, the treatment plant, the wastewater treatment plant is failing. And as you noted, there's, there's, there are apartment complexes and stuff that have gone on to the system. You know, we, we could debate it all day long and what their share is. Um, but the town of Rotterdam will go nowhere without good infrastructure. You know, we can't attract residents to our town to keep a stable tax base. We can't um, bring new businesses to our town to, again, uh, create that stable ta tax base. If we continue to let the infrastructure fail, our taxes are going to be so high, no one will want to live in Rotterdam. So we got to lasso the, this horse now. Uh, we, we need to... Uh, to address the issue, and, and the same play it goes for water. You know, we spent the better part of this year having the battle over metering. You know, I think we've gotten beyond that. Um, but as I continue to tell the regulatory agencies and even town um, residents, um, there's an expectation in our town that we get clean water and inexpensively. I'm all for that. But at the same time, we can't have an expectation again that we're going to use unlimited water in our system here. Um, and not do something about the infrastructure that we have. If we go back and look, you know, a lot of the infrastructure that was installed was in the 50s and 60s again. And the piping was sized for a system at that time. You know, look at how Rotterdam's grown over time. We've done numerous extensions of our system over time. But we haven't increased our transmission mains coming out of our, uh, our water plant. Uh, we've improved some of the storage in our system. But we still can't get water from the source to the tap. And, and as I tell regulatory agencies and others, is that needs to be addressed. Um, from a, the board standpoint, uh, even mine, I can never be in favor of doing metering if we can't get water from our source to our tap. Um, and I, I can tell you, I've been very educated on that as a board member now, and I can see that. So, so the last thing that I would want to say is, Every community throughout the United States or even in New York State has to struggle with issue issue. In the Capital District in the last five to ten years, you can hear on the radio the communities that are struggling with infrastructure issues. We as a town have an opportunity to go after grant funding, okay, and we would be remiss as a board if we didn't represent our own community in this and this very competitive funding that uh, goes on. Um, so from, from our standpoint, we can't miss an opportunity. If someone tells me, hey, Mr. Dotson, you're doing a $20 million project and $5 million doesn't make a difference in the grant, I, I say to them that is not true. It makes a huge difference. And if we're not getting that $5 million, some other community is, and they're doing their due diligence to make sure that over time, they're keeping their tax base low. So again, this is a tough job being up here. Tough decisions need to be made. Uh, I am wholly supported in making sure that our infrastructure is improved in this community for the future of our community, and that's going to require an investment of this generation. Thank you. Before I go, one last thing. Um, Let's see who I did. Question was brought up again today about, hey, you guys have ARPA monies, okay? What are you doing with those ARPA monies? Um, 
So at the next board meeting, it'll be very easy because the ARPA monies came in two payments and I believe we just recently got a uh, second payment that hasn't been allocated for anything yet, okay? Um, it's very easy for us at this time to do the accounting of where our ARPA monies are. Um, you know, there was two resolutions that were passed by the former administration relative to uh, funds for ARPA. And as you know, one of them is the, the mall and then the other one was the Phillips Road Park. At this point in time, I'm not aware of any other monies that were expended by the town of Rotterdam for ARPA funds. Uh, and so at the next meeting, it'll be very easy. We can give you the total and tell you where we stand. And then what I encourage you to do is make sure you participate in our um, meetings that are coming up for budget. Uh, I, I'm highly, again, trying to encourage our community to participate in our budget meetings that uh, will occur, I believe, in September and October. So please come out to our budget meetings because you'll get a much better appreciation where the top monies uh, are expended. Thank you. Um, I just have a couple of things to say. Number one, I know sometimes it seems, I don't know, kind of cold when you come up and you speak at the podium, but that's not that we're not listening. It's your time to say what you want. And like Jack just did, we'll try to answer some of the questions at the end of the meeting. So please don't think that we're sitting, sitting here twiddling our thumbs waiting for you to get done. We really do listen, and it helps us to govern when we know what's on your mind. Um, the second thing is, is we have had a moratorium. Uh, we put forth a local law back in January. In fact, it was brought up on the January 1st organizational meeting. And we did put a moratorium in on all apartments, whether they were six units or 160 units uh, for a full year. I believe it's March that comes up? Yeah, March or April. March or April. Uh, but uh, we will have a full year moratorium. And that was partially due so that we would have time to do the comprehensive plan and also get feedback from the residents. Uh, Rotterdam was always known as a bedroom community. Can we split it? Do we have enough apartments? And again, that's why it's so important. I'm glad when people show up to meetings. I'm glad when you come to the podium and speak. It's the only way that your voices will be heard and help to guide us as to what you want, you know, what you would like to see in your hometown. Um, the other thing is, uh, remember, I, I sound like a broken record, but September 14th, out in Rotterdam Junction, um, 7 o'clock, uh, like I say, it's right on the main street. You can't miss it. That is going to be our presentation uh, for the two uh, bonding things, one for the water and one for the wastewater treatment plant. Come and listen. And then again, at every meeting, you always have privilege of the floor. You can again speak. Um, and the last thing that I'd like to say is, Reverend, I agree with you. We have been locked apart for so long, needed, but and it just seems to make so everybody so angry. Um, I found that at the Memorial Day Parade and the National Night Out, uh, you actually saw people smiling and interacting, and I really do think that helps. Uh, we're available. Um, I'm the only retired person on the board. I'm usually here uh, from 8.30 to 4 uh, every day. Uh, tomorrow's the one exception. I won't be here. But please call, uh, make an appointment with one of us, and let's see if we can't get more community events to bring the people out, because I do think I agree with you. It's important. We have to start talking to each other instead of yelling. Thank you. That's all I got. Anybody else? Okay, do I have, uh, that concludes our business for tonight. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion. Motion by Mr. Johnson, second by Mr. Christo. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you.